Hi guys, it's Cheyenne and today I'm going to be talking all about thermodynamics. So let's get started. So what is thermodynamics? Well, thermodynamics deals with the conversions and relationships between heat and other forms of energy such as mechanical, electrical, and chemical. Thermodynamics governs the behavior of energy and has widespread applications across various fields of science. So let's discuss the laws of thermodynamics. The zeroth law of thermodynamics states that if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then the two systems originally are in thermal equilibrium with each other. First, let's understand what thermal equilibrium is. Two systems are said to be in thermal equilibrium if there is no net flow of heat when the two systems are brought into thermal contact with each other. The zeroth law of thermodynamics involves an understanding of temperature and heat. Heat is a form of energy known as thermal energy. You've heard the terms hot and cold. Well, cold isn't actually a thing. Cold is just the absence of heat. Heat always travels from a hotter object to a colder object or from a hotter object to a less hot object. So if you have a glass of water sitting outside on a hot summer day, the heat in the air or the thermal energy in the air particles will get transferred to the glass of water to a point where the water and the air are the same temperature. At this point, no more heat or thermal energy can flow from the air into the glass of water because this would mean that we got higher temperatures than we started with and we know that's not possible because of the conservation of energy. So at this point, the glass of water and the particles in the air are in thermal equilibrium with each other. They are the same temperature and no more thermal energy or heat can flow between the two systems. This has provided with the structural building blocks for devising temperature scales such as Kelvin, Celsius, and Fahrenheit, as well as creating measuring devices for temperature such as a thermometer. A thermometer works by allowing the thermometer and the object to reach a thermal equilibrium. This way, the thermometer can show its own temperature, which is equal to the temperature of the object it is in thermal equilibrium with. Now let's move on to the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can be neither created nor destroyed, only transferred between objects and transformed between types. This means that the total amount of energy within a system is conserved, and it applies to all forms of energy, such as mechanical, chemical, nuclear, and thermal. It does not have implications for how energy is transferred or converted, but it does imply that the total amount of energy within an isolated system is constant. The first law of thermodynamics provides the structural framework for understanding how energy in a system will behave, as well as understanding energy use and energy flow. It has many applications in disciplines such as engineering. The first law governs the efficiency and operations of engines and generators that convert thermal energy into mechanical energy for work. This exists in nuclear reactors, which produce steam, which is thermal energy, and they use it to spin a turbine, which is mechanical energy or mechanical work. This law also has major implications in chemical reactions. The law directly reflects the energy changes that occur with chemical reactions that majorly involve changes in heat. The total amount of energy that a substance has is known as enthalpy. Substances are made up of molecules, and the bonds within these molecules have chemical potential energy. The movement of these particles also has kinetic energy. So enthalpy takes into account both these types of energy and accounts for all the energy within a substance. The change in energy that occurs during chemical reactions in the form of heat is known as the change in enthalpy. The first law tells us that the total change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction must equal the change in energy within the bonds when comparing the bonds of the reactants to the bonds of the products. Remember, chemical reactions create new products out of initial reactants by breaking the bonds of the initial reactants to create new bonds for the products. Sometimes these new bonds are lower energy than the initial bonds, so energy is released into the environment in the form of heat. However, sometimes these new bonds are higher energy than the initial bonds, so energy actually has to be absorbed from the surroundings into the chemical reaction. But that's kind of strange. Why would a chemical reaction want to have higher energy products than it started with? Well, now let's look at the second law of thermodynamics. The second law tells us that the total entropy of an isolated system will always increase over time. So what is entropy? Well, entropy is the measure of disorder or randomness within a system. And the second law tells us that all systems want more disorder and more randomness. 
Remember earlier how I mentioned that heat always flows from a hotter object to a colder object? But why is that? Well, first, we have to understand what heat actually is. Heat or thermal energy is actually the kinetic energy of the particles within a system or typically in the air. The faster the particles move, the hotter the temperature, and the slower the particles move, the cooler the temperature. To increase entropy, systems with more microstates have greater entropy. Microstates are all the possible configurations that a system could be in, and the more possible configurations, the greater the entropy. Systems with higher temperatures have greater amounts of microstates due to the increased velocity of the particles within that system. Therefore, systems of higher temperatures have greater entropy. So if a hot object and a cooler object are brought into thermal contact with each other, the heat or thermal energy of the hotter object will be transferred over to the cooler object because this is now one full combined system and energy wants to spread out as much as it can. So the thermal energy will spread out from the hot object to the cool one. The energy will now be uniformly distributed and the system will have more possible microstates. The system now has greater entropy. Entropy is like the total chaos of a system and it is represented by the letter S. Now let's look at the third and final law of thermodynamics. The third law states that the total entropy of a perfect crystal at temperature zero Kelvin is exactly zero. A temperature of zero Kelvin, also known as a temperature of absolute zero, is the lowest possible temperature that can be theoretically reached. It is a temperature at which all motion of particles stops. This law provides a reference point for entropy to be calculated based off of. It also allows us to understand the strange behavior of systems at extremely low temperatures, such as superfluids and superconductors. All systems want to move towards lower energy states, but I mentioned that some chemical reactions create products that are higher energy than the initial reactants. Well, to understand this, we have to understand the driving forces that cause a chemical reaction to go. In a chemical reaction, enthalpy wants to turn the reactants into products that are lower energy, but entropy, on the other hand, wants to turn the reactants into products that are more spread out. And sometimes these two forces don't align. Sometimes the products are more spread out, but the reactants are lower energy. If the tendency for a system to move towards maximum entropy is greater than the system's tendency to move towards minimum enthalpy, a reaction can occur where the products are higher energy or have higher enthalpy than the reactants. To figure out the way a chemical reaction will actually go if both these forces of enthalpy and entropy are acting in opposite directions, we can use what's called Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy can be represented by the following equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, where delta G is the variable for Gibbs free energy, delta H is the change in enthalpy that occurs for a chemical reaction, T is the temperature and delta S is the change in entropy that accompanies a chemical reaction. So if you substitute your values into the Gibbs free energy equation and you get a value out that is greater than zero, this means that the reaction in the forward direction is spontaneous at that specific temperature and under those certain conditions. If your Gibbs free energy value is less than zero, this means that the reaction is not spontaneous in the forward direction. Instead, the reverse reaction is favored and the reverse reaction is the reaction that will go. Finally, if delta G is zero, this means that the products and the reactants are equally favored. They have equal amounts of energy in regards to maximum entropy and minimum enthalpy. At this balance point, the production rate of reactants is equal to the production rate of the products. The system is now said to be in dynamic equilibrium. So you could have 10 liters of product and five liters of reactant at an equilibrium point. The rate at which products are produced could be one liter a minute, and the rate at which reactants are produced could also be one liter a minute. The forward and the reverse reactions are both occurring spontaneously at this temperature. The concentration of the reactants and the concentration of the products does not necessarily need to be equal, but it does mean that these concentrations are staying constant. If we look at the Gibbs free energy equation, it tells us that entropy is a more important factor when temperature increases. 
Since in the equation, temperature and entropy are multiplied and then subtracted from enthalpy, and if we have a negative number, we know that entropy is the greater driving force in the chemical reaction. A greater temperature corresponds to a higher impact of entropy. Okay, and that is it for my introduction to thermodynamics. I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you next time.